Okay. Goodness gracious. <laughs> All right, hopefully uh, somebody will come in here. Um, Just talking to myself, cause my camera took a crap. Oh man. Alright. Okay, now we got some people. We got some people coming in here. Alright. Hello, Haley B. And I'm back. <laughs> Thank God. Uh man, so yeah, I don't know what happened. My camera just I don't know if it's overheated or what. I've never had this issue like this before. I've had the camera turn off, but this is like, I think this might be bad. <laughs> um, charged all my cameras, or I charged all my batteries and stuff. I, I don't know why it's not working. I think it might just be too hot. So anyway, here I am, uh, back again. And uh, hopefully we can continue our little chat. It's going to be kind of awkward looking, though. Wait for it. Hi from New York, Joseph. Uh, I wonder if I can still see, because we had a lot of, like, questions and stuff in the last one. Let's see if I can still see that. Why is it that on days when you need things to go really, really well, uh, they just, they just don't. I, I don't really understand that at all, um, but oh well. All right. Okay, there's a question. All right, now so we're not just on, at dead air here. <laughs> Thank you, somebody, for giving me a question. <laughs> um, Zatil? I'm not sure if I'm saying your name right. Um, hopefully I am. Uh, is asking, let me pull it. How did you meet uh, or find Philip? Also, how would you recommend bassists and other accompanists find artists to play with? Uh, so, I actually met Philip uh, through a producer friend of ours uh, named Rick Beato. And uh, Rick did my first record, um, which was called Among the Wildest Things. Um, and he's in Atlanta, or right outside of Atlanta, and now Rick Beato's his own, like, super big deal on YouTube, but, um, I met Phil through him. Phil was interning for him at the time, and, uh, I needed, uh, a bass player for one of the songs, and, uh, Rick recommended, uh, getting Phil on it, and, and it's actually how I met both Phil and Rhett. Uh, they both played on one of my songs called Patchwork Lover. And they did a great job. And they were, you know, they're a little older than me, but like around my age. Um, and we were kind of looking to add people um, to to make sort of a band. <laughs> uh, at the time, it was mainly just me uh, writing the songs and playing them acoustically, or me and my older brother Ian, um, who plays drums and is also like a recording engineer and uh, producer. And um, it was just kind of me and Ian doing our thing and we wanted to to get a band together and it just kind of naturally happened because we met uh, both Rhett and Phil at Rick's studio. Uh, they played on Patrick Lover um, and it went really well and they were just a really good, honestly, they were really just a good vibe. They were uh, really easy to hang out with, easy to talk to. Um, and as far as the other part of your question, like how to find other artists to work with, um, I would I would say I would say the main thing is like you want to find it's not just finding people that to work with it's finding people you like to work with <laughs> and uh, because that's that's really the only way it's gonna work I think um, you know for me uh, I got very lucky in Phil and Rhett that they kind of came early and now we have you know toured all over the place together and and done so many things together. Um, we're going to open for Willie Nelson next week. 
Um, and we're all super psyched about it, you know, cause it's, we've, we've all kind of been on this journey together and I've, I'm really lucky about that, um, or for that, but that's not the case for everybody. Um, you know, sometimes you have to, uh, kind of put yourself out there and kind of scratch and claw for certain gigs. And, um, I would say, I think the best way to probably, at least like when I do have to have another bass player or somebody fill in or even a guitar player. Uh, and I've got quite a few that are really good. Um, just over the years, like if Phil couldn't do the gig or whatever, we've had to sub someone else in. And the way they stick around is by being, uh, first and foremost, a good hang. They just need to be a good person. <laughs> and, and that's, you know, that sounds, I don't know, that sounds obvious, but really, you know, think about it. You're in uh, tight quarters with these people. Like if you're actually touring, you're, you're in a van or, you know, if you're lucky, a bus, but, you know, most likely you're in a van uh, of some sort with these people for hours and hours and hours on end. You need to be able to hang out with them and, and uh, not hate each other afterwards. Um, so that's the first thing is just they need to be a good hang um, and, and be fun to hang out with and just... Um, you know, be comfortable being yourself around these people. Um, and then also they need to be professional. Um, so, you know, everybody, luckily everybody I've worked with so far, um, if, you know, like I said, if Phil can't make a show, I've got two or three other bass players, um, who are super, super professional, who show up to the rehearsal. Um, they know everything already. They don't, you know, I don't have to spend a lot of time, um, going over songs with them and teaching them certain things here and there. They just, they, they are really good at studying the music beforehand and, and figuring it out um, before they come to rehearsal. And that's, that's a huge deal. So be a time saver. Uh, if you're trying to like play with other artists and, and kind of stick around with them, uh, save them time and energy and stress <laughs> in any way that you can. Um, but you know, it's, it's, it's mainly just about, just be a good hang, you know, be easy to hang out with. Let's see here. Benny asks, are you a better acoustic or electric guitar player? Definitely better at acoustic guitar. Uh, electric guitar is something I always am trying to get better at, um, but it's just really hard for me because I started on acoustic guitar and I tend to play the electric guitar like an acoustic guitar, which doesn't really work out well, um, because I grip the neck pretty hard on an acoustic guitar. I'm really pressing down pretty firm with my fingers. Um, I might strum a little harder on acoustic guitar and with electric guitar, you're really letting the electronics do all the work. And I have a hard time getting in that frame of mind, uh, before I actually, uh, play electric guitar or especially during a live show, it's hard for me to switch back and forth from acoustic to electric and like keep in mind like, okay, I gotta treat this electric guitar a little more delicately, right? Like I've gotta, you know, it's a little more tender than the acoustic. And it's hard to do that when you have a, like adrenaline pumping and stuff. Um, I love the electric guitar. And like I said, I'm trying to get better at it. Always trying to get my tone a little better. I'm not super happy with my tone right now. Um, but I'm trying to figure that out. Uh, but yeah, I would say I definitely lean towards acoustic guitar and Acoustic guitar is what I write the best on. Anytime I'm writing a song, it is nine times out of ten going to be an acoustic guitar in my hands. Let's see here. Caleb Robertson, what are your thoughts of songs written with two different time signatures? Example, verse written in 4-4 and chorus written in 3-4. Uh, I think if it works, it works. Um, I think they're, I think that people will tell you there's a lot of rules uh, for songwriting, and I really think that there's just not. Um, like I said earlier in my previous stream uh, that we uh, don't mention anymore because it's dead to me, and also it's dead because it uh, died, um, in my previous stream, um, you know, I was saying, like, I'm not huge into music theory all the time. Um, and I think because of that, uh, I've written some really interesting songs. I've written songs that 
someone who's trying to adhere to some kind of formula may not think of. Um, I'm not saying that I'm by any means better than anyone that, you know, knows every single uh, law there is about writing music. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do think that I have um, a different perspective uh, of things sometimes because I'm not so caught up in the um, the weeds of, of songwriting. Andrew says, at work, but wanted to drop in and say congrats on the new video, and I love the new album. Thank you so much, Andrew. Don't get in trouble. Catman Do says, your voice is made for acoustic guitar. Um, I would agree. <laughs> I would agree. Um, I actually even was told recently that my voice was made for a certain style of acoustic guitar, like a certain shape and everything, too. I don't know if I agree as much with that, but thank you. Uh, who are some artists that had a large influence on my lyric writing? Um, I've said it a million times on other, um, on other streams and stuff, but Ray LaMontagne. Um, huge, huge, huge influence on me. Uh, especially my lyric writing. Um, he is someone who has an extremely soulful voice like I do. Um, but his words are insanely poetic. Um, super, super deep and, and very poetic. Uh, Caleb also asks, do you have a dream guitar right now? Or are you fortunate to own your own, uh, own your dream guitar? Um... No, I don't. Well, I mean, I have, I'm, I'm fortunate to own some really great guitars. Um, you know, I think like an original Martin D28 would be like probably the, probably the dream. Um, and I definitely don't own one of those cause I don't have like a hundred thousand dollars. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I always have dream guitars, and it changes, like, every season. <laughs> That's the thing of being a guitar player. We're never, ever, 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 ever happy with what we have. Do I have any tips for getting better at singing uh, while playing? Um, you're going to hate it, but, like, you just have to do it. You have to suck at it for a long time um, until at some point your brain just kind of switches and I don't, I don't know. I couldn't point to, um, well, maybe I could actually, I think that when I started writing music, um, it got easier for me. And I started writing music when I was a teenager. Like that was one of the first things I really got into was writing music. And I think that made it easier. Um, because I was still, you know, I would say I was still learning guitar when I was, when I was a teenager and writing music. Um, but it definitely made it easier when I'm like writing my own parts. And I guess you're, you're basically like learning at that point to kind of sing around what you're writing. So, you know, that, I don't know if that makes sense, but, um, other than that, like if you're not writing songs and you're, and you're covering stuff, um, the only trick I know is, is literally just to keep doing it until it works and it will work at some point um you just kind of have to you have to suck at it for a little while i know that's just a terrible answer but it's it's the truth <laughs> david McAllister, what's up man glad to see him doing well always love the music thanks so much man i really appreciate you Stiffmeister, yep, you just gotta keep grinding. It's true. The only way is through. So, um, let's see here. I feel like I had some other questions on this other stream. I wanna see if I can get into that real quick. Thank you to the 20 some odd people that have stuck with me through this just ridiculous live stream. Um, this was supposed to be so much more polished than this, um, but I am glad that you guys are here. Thank you so much. <clears throat> uh, 
How much time we got? Ooh, we're getting close to the premiere, everybody. Does anybody have any questions about the music video uh, or anything like that before we get out of here? Ooh, here's another question real quick. Um, which do I enjoy more, touring or writing and recording? Um, it's kind of one of those scenarios where when I'm not on the road, I'm missing the road. But when I'm on the road, uh, I'm like really, really missing home. So uh, it's kind of you can't have the best of both worlds uh, uh, situation. And... I don't know. I don't know if I can answer that question, honestly. Like, I don't, I don't know if I can really pick one. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I think it's literally just, again, you can't have the best of both worlds. Let's see here. Am I going to do Thursday Jukebox anytime soon? I want to. Um, I always want to. And for some reason, I always get too busy with other stuff. Um, but I really want to. I really enjoy doing it. And you guys are awesome every time you tune in. You're so good to me <laughs> every time you tune in. Uh, so, yeah, I'll definitely I'll get one going soon. Uh, the Void to Neverland. Still such a great name. Let's see. Uh, what you got here? Love the lighting from what I've seen in the music video, which is so very different from your others. Any reason or inspiration uh, that inspired it? Yes. Um, so there's a lot of, along with a lot of things, but there's there's a lot of uh, water imagery uh, going on in Let the Damn Thing Break in, in just the fact that we are talking about a dam breaking. Um, and, you know, originally I wanted, originally I wanted practical effects. I wanted like real water effects um, and we tried very hard to do that but we just kept running into one budget issue because it's just insanely expensive to have real practical effects on set um, and then two it was just like okay well how do we uh, how do we get everything wet without getting everything wet um, so that just kind of kept we kept running into that wall um, and instead, we decided to go with a kind of water lighting theme. Um, and I really didn't fully get how it was going to look until I stepped on set that day. Um, and Grayson and Lindsay, uh, who are great, um, you know, if you're in Atlanta or something and you ever need a music video or, um, you know, anything, really, they are just fantastic. Um, Grayson and uh, Lindsay Arias. Uh, from Grayscale. Uh, but anyway, I stepped on set that day and they were finally getting the lights tuned on the walls and everything. And it was, there are these like, I don't, I don't know how they work. I think it's some kind of like filament inside the light that's rotating. Um, but it's, it makes it look very water-like. Um, and the movement is very water-like. Um, and when I saw that on the walls, I was like, okay, so this is like this almost kind of 70s vibe. Um, with these crazy like water like kind of the, like a gel light or something um, and I absolutely loved it I think it was exactly what I wanted I just wanted it I kind of I wanted to the whole video to kind of feel like at any moment it the dam could break you know um, so like that's what originally that's why we wanted some actual water and stuff in there but I think this was a really good compromise that we came up with <clears throat> Kat Van Du with a real hard-hitting question. Here we go. Do you feel like you are as successful as you hoped to be years ago when you first started? Oh, man. Um, let's see if I'm answering honestly. Yes and no. Um, yes and no. I'm successful in the fact that this is what I do for my living. And that is success for sure, um, because you know I'm not digging ditches, I'm not uh, you know flipping burgers. I'm you know I'm I am able to do what I love for a living, um, 
And I'm, every day, I am grateful for that. And I mean that. Um, at the same time, I have not quite figured out, um, I don't, or I guess I don't feel like I have figured out exactly where my music belongs. <laughs> um, or maybe the flip side of that is I, I have a good idea of where my music belongs, but I haven't figured out how to get it there. Um, and I think a lot of artists would probably agree with that. Um, I'm always trying to, one, get better at my craft um, and better at my art, make better art. Um, but I'm also trying to find the right audience all the time. And, you know, I have like people like you guys who get it immediately. <laughs> they, they hear the music and they get it. Um, but that's just not the case with everybody. And, and um, I think I'm, you know, just trying to figure out how best to express my music to people and, and get it in the right rooms and the right crowds in front of the right crowds. Um, and I think that's just going to come with time. Um, Katie Pruitt just posted a song today on her Instagram that was like really speaking to something I was feeling that was just that, that good things just take time. Um, and I do, you know, I go through, um, all the same stuff that people all over the world go through with, with, um, that kind of like imposter syndrome, uh, kind of feeling. I get that all the time. Um, and it's sometimes really hard to deal with. Um, and sometimes really like crippling, uh, especially to like my creative side, because you really, it's hard to create from, uh, from a viewpoint of, of like, well, I don't fit in or I don't belong or whatever. It's, it's really hard to create from that. Um, so I've been trying to steer clear of that as much as I can, or at least just remind myself that what I've got going on is enough. <laughs> uh, and again, that I do this for my living and I've got people in my life that I love and, you know, band members that I really love. Um, so yes, like I, I do think I'm successful in some ways. Um, have I reached the point that I, I want to be at? No, I don't think I have. Have I looked into getting my music on uh, TV ads? Absolutely, I have. <laughs> uh, also something that's very hard to do uh, if you don't have the right connections. Um, that is something that, honestly, I think is going to be very crucial um, for my music uh, to getting me to that uh, point of success that I was just talking about. Um, I think, my, you know, my music, I was just kind of talking about this the other day. My music is for people that love lyrics uh that love to you know feel things deeply <laughs> and um i think that it's hard sometimes to find the right place for that kind of music in in the world we live in at the moment um because i think a lot of times we gravitate towards the shiniest thing or the um you know the thing that just makes you move which is great and i, I don't have any problem with that at all but um i think that having my my music in like a TV show or the right movie or something like that where you know an emotional thing is happening on screen that you're already connecting with on an emotional level I know per, just from personal experience when you know some of my favorite songs I have found that way um, when I'm watching you know a movie or a TV show that I really love and they use like a really great song by somebody or even a really great cover uh, by somebody um, I found a lot of my favorite music that way. So I think that's going to be pretty important uh, to getting my music in front of the right people. Um, so yeah, I'm, I, I, that's something I think about all the time. Just haven't figured out a good way to do it yet. Kat says, you don't really belong to any of the mainstream types of music. Your voice and your style is unique, which is what draws people uh, who follow you. And yeah, so I agree with that statement a little bit. Um, you know, it's, it's always hard. One of the hardest questions I get is like, what kind of music do you play? <laughs> and I'm like, well, um, it's kind of Americana. It's kind of country sometimes it's uh, straight up rock and roll. Other times like let the damn thing break is a rock and roll song. Um, no bones about it. That's what it is. Um, 
And I love all of that. And I feel like when I'm writing songs, all of that is represented. And it's really hard sometimes to tell people, especially people who are, you know, trying to figure you out or, or figure out where to put your music. It's hard to tell them like, I mean, I just make music. Like I, I don't, I don't know. It's really hard to put a genre on it, but I guess like right now we've been going for like, you know, Americana, Americana rock, Americana country. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of interesting. Um, and I do think, yeah, I don't, I think it's like the weird thing is like my voice is very soulful and bluesy. What I write is not blues. Um, every now and again, we'll get a blues song like high enough or whatever. Um, but like what I write is more singer songwriter Americana or something like let the damn thing break where it's this like rock song or like hell or high water that is just a Americana rock song kind of has some like classic rock vibes to it so you know it's it's just it's hard to know all the time <laughs> do you ever plan on doing more gigs in London I only found out about you uh after your gig in Canary Wharf and I'm really disappointed I missed it oh yeah I definitely do um, I don't have anything on the books right this second, but I'm, I'm sure, um, I mean, hopefully next year we'll be able to come back over there. I love, uh, the UK. I love, uh, Europe in general, and we always have a really, really good time there. So I definitely want to come back. I am coming back to Tennessee, actually. Um, we're doing Whiskey Jam, that show that got canceled. We're doing Whiskey Jam on the 20. 9th of August. Um, so we'll do, I think we have like three songs there. And then also, uh, I'm going to do a more acoustic set at the analog, um, with my friend Bonnie Baker, um, in Nashville on the 30th. So 29th at Whiskey Jam, uh, August 29th at Whiskey Jam, and then August 30th, uh, at the analog. If you want to come out and see me, I'd love to have you. Will Good Trouble be coming out west? Um, as soon as we can. <laughs> yeah. Um, still putting some more stuff on the uh, calendar right now. Uh, they are coming out with me to the Willie Nelson shows um, and all of that good stuff. Do I have any plans to be in Northeast PA? Let me... Okay, so we're we're doing a Willie Nelson show with, uh, in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, next week on the 6th. I can't think geographically where that is, <laughs> so you can tell me. Um, yeah. All right, so uh, I think I'm going to wrap it up here in just a minute. Uh, does anybody have any other burning questions uh, before I wrap this up and then we all head over to the premiere uh, the premiere of the new music video let the damn thing break uh, is at five o'clock eastern time so just about what half an hour a little under half an hour um, and I will be there I'll be in the chat uh, talking to you guys and hopefully getting uh, some good feedback from you um, so yeah let me see do you guys have any other burning questions before I get out of here This tea has gone cold, but it still tastes real good. Ooh, Zachary, I don't know. Who's my favorite singer-songwriter? Mm. Boy, that's really hard. <laughs> um, just off the top of my head, probably like Jason Isbell. Um, but honestly, the more I, the more I dive in back to like John Prine and stuff, um, and his old catalog, I mean, you, it's really hard to find a better one than John Prine. Kat Von Du says, we'll post the premiere on the social media. Looking forward to it. Yeah, please do. Could I get to any of my concerts without GPS? Probably not. To be really honest with you, probably not. You know, that's my millennial showing. <laughs> I 
All right, guys. I think I'm going to wrap it up. Um, thank you guys so much. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for, um, you know, hanging through the weird technical difficulties. <laughs> um, and I cannot wait uh, for you guys to see this video. Uh, I really, really hope uh, that you enjoy it. And, um, yeah, I, I just think, uh, you know, it's a, it's a video that means a lot to me. Um, it's a message that means a lot to me. And, and I really, really hope you guys enjoy it. So head on over to the premiere. Uh, we've got, let's see, yeah, like 20-ish minutes, 20 or so minutes. Um, and I will see you guys over there. I will be in the chat. So, yeah, look for me there. I love you guys. Um, I hope you have a great day. And, uh, yeah, if you could, if you want to help me out, share that video. Share the link to the video um, wherever you can. That will really, really help me out. So, I love you guys, and uh, I'll see you over on the premiere.